happy Sparkle September! Welcome to this week's live event. We're back here in our art studio. Last week we were in our RV, but today we are here amongst all my beautiful art supplies ready to do some coloring with you today for Sparkle September. And I'm having a great time because I'm letting you tell me what sparkly products I should use on this mandala. So far we have got this far on this mandala. Look at that. Steve. Whoa, I caught the sparkles. We've used so far some sparkly highlighters and our Paul Rubin metallic-y sparkly glittery paints to create this effect so far. So pretty. Mm -hmm. So that's where we left off and as we left Facebook I let everyone pick the next product and this is what they picked the FW Pearlescent Liquid Acrylic in Moon Violet by De La Rani. So this will be the next product we put onto the mandala. But before we do that, I want to tell you about a Sparkle September giveaway that I am excited to tell you about. Last week we tried a really cool product that was fun and really hard to get our hands on. Polly was there with us and she had these really cool gel pens and she was telling me about them. She let me try them. They are the Crazy Pop by Pentel. You guys know I love the Sparkle Pop pens and I had so much fun trying the Crazy Pop pens. And one of you guys, one of my viewers, told me to check out my local Smiths. That's a local grocery store here in Utah. And they said that's where they have found the Crazy Pop pens. And sure enough, I found the Crazy Pop pens here locally. So I bought multiple packages. Actually, I bought three packages, two for me and one for you because I couldn't do just one package for myself. I had to have one package for here in the art studio and one package for me to take with my little set of gel pens that I carry with me um, wherever we go. So I have two sets of Crazy Pop pens and one for you as a giveaway. There's a link in the video description that you can follow. You have a full week to have a chance to enter for um, you, this giveaway. It also comes with a pretty cool little sticky pad here with um, paper that's both black and white so you can test the two-tone effect right away when you get your set of Crazy Pop pens. So excited that you get a chance to win these and experience these really unique pens. They're kind of hard to find. And I'm also going to include for the winner of these pens some copies of some of my coloring pages on my favorite paper for gel pens, my mixed media paper. So you can look forward to that little secret bonus in your prize, whoever wins these pens. So good luck, everyone. Follow that link. Get your entries in. Make sure you like this video, share, subscribe, all those good YouTube things so that you can um, show your love to us so that we know you enjoy this kind of giveaway. And make sure you share um, the giveaway to other people that you think might enjoy playing around with these fun, crazy pop pens. Now, I'm going to hand this set to Steve so that he can take good care of them and make sure I don't accidentally open them up and play with them. <laughs> so now we're going to get into Sparkle um, September in onto this art but before I do that I wanted to show you how last week's mandala turned out. I've got it right here. It's in Mandala Bliss Volume 2. If you're looking for a fun book to color in that has lots of little details, um, which is perfect for gel pens like those crazy pops, Mandala Bliss Volume 2 is really fun. And this is how it turned out. Look at all of the sparkle. So this is all gel pens except for the background, which I used some distress inks. And I used the green version of this, which we're going to use right now to do some of the fun details on the background. Look at that sparkle for Sparkle September. So that's how that one turned out from last week in case you missed it. Now I did post the finished version in Facebook and on Instagram so if you're not following me there make sure you do so when I do post my colored pages you don't miss out on that. Okay. So I think we've taken care of business. We're ready to get back to art. Let me show you how this product right here looks and acts. 
and I will change the view so you can see the bottle right here. Like I said, this is Moon Violet by De La Rani. This is their liquid acrylic inks. Now, basically it's an acrylic paint. Think of it as a more of a paint than it is an ink. It's just kind of a more liquidy version of an acrylic paint so that you can use it with dip pens and other kinds of products like that. It says ideal for brush painting, dip pens, and ruling pens. I don't even know what a ruling pen is. I know what a dip pen is and a brush is. It's water resistant, pearl effect, stir well before use. It should say shake well. Why does it say stir well? Who's going to stir that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you need to shake it really good because all of that beautiful glitteriness settles to the bottom every time. So then what I usually do is drip some into a little bowl and you do want to rinse your bowl out as soon as you're done because it is acrylic. So it's going to dry like a plasticky type um, film on whatever you put it on. And you don't want to use your good water brushes. You want to use a more of an inexpensive or acrylic type brush if you're going to use a brush. So I grabbed this brush. This is a detail brush by Arteza. You can use whatever kind of acrylic or all-purpose brush that you've got. But I thought this would be good because I'm picturing putting that purple in this little detail area all around the whole mandala. So I picked a really nice small detail brush. These have a dropper, which sort of work pretty good. There it is. Look how pretty it is. <laughs> Heidi so says, pretty. hi, this is my first time here watching a live stream because I'm in the UK and I'm usually sleeping. Oh, but I'm working a night shift. So I wanted to give you a quick thank you and hello. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. That's so fun. Delia asked, what are dip pens? Dip pens are like those old fashioned pens that you see on Pride and Prejudice when she dips in and she draws the with them. They're usually. usually a metal type nib. I've got a whole bunch of them. I'll be using some of those dip pens during um, Inktober. I love using them during Inktober. So um, they're really fun. Um, a lot of artists like the dip pens and during Inktober you'll see a lot of your artists here on um, YouTube start pulling out their dip pens. Dip pens are a lot of fun to play with, but they are a skill. You have to really practice your dip pens because they're metal. They, they like scratch your paper and I tend to um, be a little aggressive with my dip pens and hurt my paper. Uh, I need more practice with my dip pens. Okay, so like I said, unlike watercolor, if I were to let that leftover ink in this bowl dry, you can reactivate watercolor um, later so I could walk away from this and come back tomorrow or next week and reactivate that um, That pigment that ink But because it's acrylic, it's just going to dry down kind of like a plastic and you can't reactivate that So that's the main difference between a, like an acrylic or a water-based type product it's one of the things I love about water-based products is they're so forgiving if you walk away from them because you have to go take care of kids or you're tired, you can come back and reactivate and keep going. Beth Ann asked, could this be used with glass pens? Yes, the dip pens, the glass dip pens, yes. Those are so pretty. I don't own one of those yet but I've had them in my Amazon cart several times because they're so pretty. And same deal, you'll wanna wash your pens, whether you're using the metal dip pens or your glass dip pens. Just make sure you wash the tip really good so that you don't get a buildup of the acrylic on them. Ooh, that purple with those colors looks so pretty. 
as I knock the bowl over. So I'm working in Mandala Bliss Volume 3 tonight, in case you're wondering. Volume 3 has mandalas that are more wide open, bigger spaces, and I thought it would be a fun book for us to work in tonight. Plus, it's printed on watercolor paper. Mine is, at least. You can, when you order from our Coloring Bliss print shop, you get to pick what paper your book is printed on. And I had Steve print mine on watercolor papers, so I thought it'd be a fun book tonight for us to work in. So no matter what products you guys want me to try tonight, it should work well. Heidi asked, can you use water on gel pens? Yeah, um, for me, the best product I have found for blending gel pens is glycerin. That's by far the the most success I've had with blending gel pens is with glycerin, which if you caught us last week um, for the live event, I did some demonstrating of how to blend gel pens with glycerin. Uh, plus I have a whole playlist here on YouTube of me demonstrating how to like paint with gel pens and glycerin and blend and do all kinds of fun effects with the glycerin and gel pens. Sherry Bug D says, I love exploring color palettes by coloring mandalas. Yeah, mandalas are really a fun way to experiment. They're very forgiving and fun. And because you're not trying to do like a, a face or leaves or things, you can really experiment with fun different color palettes. All right, we are almost two-thirds of the way around this this pretty purple so pretty I can't wait to see it shine and sparkle like the top of the Chrysler building yeah. <laughs> you are doing some fun one-liners tonight. <laughs> You're my one-liner guy tonight. As I'm using an, a liner brush. Mm. All right. I think I poured out way too much of this purple ink. Oh well. It's amazing how far it goes. Carolyn says, I'm thinking you can cut a picture of your favorite person in a circle and paste it in the middle. Ooh, good idea. That's so funny. She says favorite person, and the first thing I think of is Rose. <laughs> 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 I'm such a dog mom. Never did I think I would become a dog mom. I never thought I'd be a dog mom. <laughs> oh, I'm such a dog mom now. Sorry, Steve. She says favorite person, and the first thing I think of is <laughs> the dog. The first person I thought of was you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I'm a horrible wife. <laughs> what show was it? Uh, what was that? Oh, what was that funny show? Whereas, <laughs> back in the 90s, anyway, husband and wife. Um, I don't know. Helen. Helen, Helen Hunt? Hunt. Mad about you? Yeah, mad about you. And they were asked a question like, something like, if you were stranded on a desert island with a person of the opposite sex, how long would it take you before you would like get in a relationship with that person? Uh-huh. And he, he wrote down, like, they had to write it down separately, and he wrote something like, two months, and she wrote, forever. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> oh, I wish Mad About You would come to Netflix's, Netflix's, to Netflix, or Hulu, or something. That's one that I haven't rewatched in ages, probably since... 
Rylan was little. That's the last time I remember watching. I remember he had they had that dog that would run and smack into the wall. How did this become reminiscing about that show? <laughs> <laughs> that was a funny show. Because that's what I pulled on you. Yeah. You shamed your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I know your humor. Oh, that's too funny. All right. Probably partly too because I know you wouldn't want your picture in the middle of my mandala. <laughs> Is that true? Would. You would want your picture in the middle? Of course. <laughs> you should see his face. <laughs> He's like, uh-huh. <laughs> how, how did we get so slap happy tonight? Okay. Almost done with that purple all the way around. Look how pretty that framed and it's really making that green pop. All right, we did it. Okay, now we gotta wash that brush right away because it's acrylic paint on there. It's not watercolor. We can't be slack in here. So you can tell it's already started to dry on the edges there. So I'm going to send Steve to the sink. Yeah, it's already drying. See how it dries off? That's why we don't use our good watercolor brushes. So say goodbye to that pretty ink and that's all right. Um, oh, actually, this is really pretty. Yeah. Do you want to like do some, some dots? You could do like the outer dots. Steve's making me feel bad for wasting it, but we've got a lot of other products to try and test, so we're just going to say goodbye to this ink. Everybody take a moment and just go, ah, oh, look how pretty it is. Ah, oh. okay, goodbye. Um, <laughs> you'll want to not just wash it down, so like wipe it out so it doesn't go straight down our sink, and then wipe, clean the rest out into the sink. Okay, wow, that's really pretty. Yeah, enjoy it while you clean it, and then use a little bit of um, the Dawn soap that's in the... Uh, uh, Steve, you're distracted. Well, I know, he's he's I know, sitting the there Dawn looking at the ink, and clean, and clean the brush, the bristles to get that off. Okay, he's playing with the it's ink. It's just so cool. You're going to make it really hard to wash it out. He's playing with it in the bowl. <laughs> okay, here you go. I'm going to show them the sparklies now. Okay. okay, have fun. Here, take this paper towel. You'll need it. By the way, Lark says, I heard Mad About You is going to be revived. New episode. Whoa, really? Wow, that would be awesome. Okay, here's the sparkles. Sparkle, 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 sparkle. Okay, so we have other products now. If you were with us on Facebook, Facebook, you kind of already know what I have in my stash. Oh, I'm knocking inks over now. Ah, ah. Um, that ink fell back. I gotta save it before it spills. Okay, there. All is well with the world. Okay, we have, um, let me show you in the background here. Uh, I put some up here. Someone said they would like to see these ones here we've got these are some paints by folk art there this one's a color shift type of paint and then this is like a glaze that adds like a sparkle on top um, this one is they're both really fun I don't know how they'll interact with a water-based paint though that's the only danger here but we do have these type products we can do we've got stickles in the back we've got Jane Davenport mermaid markers these are all the sparkle ones we've got Jane Davenport glit C's we've got a spectrum noir sparkle um, I also have um, some Pam pastels that have glitter in them um, and then of course we have gel pens, which I kind of thought maybe we would avoid gel pens tonight, but we don't have to um, because we did gel pens last week. So, um, and then we have more paint. We can bring up more um, paints if we want to. Thank you for washing that, Steve. You're welcome. <laughs> sure appreciate it. All right. So what would you guys like to see me color with next? Oh yeah, there was folk art. Okay. Um, we could try the folk art, this one here, in some of the dots or something. That could be fun. Should we do that? Sure. Okay. So this one, this brand here, I uh, picked this one up at Walmart. 
this one was at Walmart. This one was at Hobby Lobby. These are expensive. You can get these ones, I know for sure, because I've got them in my Amazon wish list. A set of them, of different colors, and they're supposed to shift in color. This one is, let's see if I can find the name. Pink Flash is the name of this one, and then this one is Violet Blue Green Shift. So let's try this one and I'll show you what it does. That's what the end cap looks like. And I'll squirt a little bit out. So we're gonna get kind of a red violet type look with like blue undertones is what this paint does. It's really neat. Okay, and I probably squirted too much out again. It seems to be the theme. So let me show you the bowl again so you can see what the liquid paint looks like. But it has to do with when the white of the paint of the paper comes through, then you really get that two-tone effect going. So let's use this maybe um, here. I think I got too much on my brush. So I would really like to get the full set of these paints. I was excited to find them at Walmart. Oh, this is the, what I ran into last time is that it needed two layers. So I think I'm just going to embrace the fact that this is going to need two layers. The first layer last time I tried this was very streaky and it's doing it again here. So we'll kind of work quick. Do one layer and then come back for the second layer. So I would love to know what your favorite sparkly products are when you want to add sparkle. What do you go to? By the way, they're having a request for pan pastels. Okay. So. Pan pastels would be fun on the border. Be a Bright Sparkle says these are so hard to get a hold of in the UK. Ah. And Heidi asks, can you get the paints on Amazon? These ones right here, I know for sure you can get on Amazon. I've got, it's like a set of six or something. They're in our cart, Steve, if you're <laughs> looking for it right now. Um, but it's pricey. You'll see, Steve, when you find it. And like I said, you have to do two layers to get the full effect. These are the Color Shift Chameleon? Yep, there they are. Folk Art Color Shift Chameleon Paints. It's $37. And how many are in there? Four, eight colors. Eight colors for $37. Isn't that expensive? I don't know. It feels expensive to me. But they do some pretty neat things. Oh, I'm out of frame. Sorry, you guys. I'm trying to go fast. And Teresa said Michaels has all the colors. I checked my Michaels and was having a hard time finding the colors. And it's probably just bad luck. They probably were just sold out at the time. Beth says that she loves gel pens and glitter glue like stickles. Yeah. We need to add some stickles to this. Amy says, um, I have to pick a favorite. <laughs> yeah, let's play the same game we played last night. If you could only take one glitter product with you onto a desert island to color with. Wow, this is the second time we've used desert island. Yeah. If you were going to go onto a desert island and you were only allowed one sparkle product in your color stash, <clears throat> what sparkle product would you bring? Carolyn just donated. She says, because I heart you guys. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much, Carolyn. I sparkle heart you too. <laughs> <laughs> what one 
coloring product would you take, Steve, if you were only allowed one coloring product? One coloring product. <laughs> no, would... okay, one sparkle coloring product. Graphitants. Graphitants. I guess they are sparkly until you hit them with water. Graphitants. It's not what I would pick. Melinda says that her favorite sparkly items are Zig Wink of Stella pens, mm. ZR glitter paint pens, and Sharpie glitter paint pens. I have those, the ZR ones, I think, in my cart, too. <laughs> I have so many things in my cart. <laughs> That's and, good uh, to know they're that good. Carolyn says, I love my Wink of Stellas. That's one of the products. I have Wink of Stella this form in this pen kind right here and I know they have them in brush tip as well so we could do wink of Stella's tonight yeah. too Deanna says sparkle pop sparkle pop oh yeah sparkle pops would be a, a second for me Deb says Pentel metallic hybrids uh-huh Amy says probably the clear wink of Stella because then I could put it on every color. Ah, now that's some good logic there. <laughs> yeah, bright Sparkle, Pentel Hybrids, same mm -hmm. with Lori and Sparkle Pops. Yeah. Polly says sparkly gel pens if I have to pick one thing. Yeah. All right, we got it all the way around. Now you can see, let me move it in the light. See if you can if it catches it yet. You can see it's not catching it really great. And that's because we've got just the one layer. So right now, kind of what it's catching is all the streakiness. So the light can't get the effect yet because it's not like a solid. In person, I'm seeing the effect a little bit, but it's again because we don't have the second coat on it yet. So we'll go again here. And I think I started somewhere around here. I might let it dry a little bit here. Let's let it dry. Come back to it. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to, let's do this dot out here too. And then by the time I do these dots, we can go in and do the inner dots. And we can always hit it with the heat gun too. Um, the heat gun should work really well for this kind of paint. Polly says it's not nice to make her pick just one thing. You've seen her stash. <laughs> <laughs> it would be really hard. Well, my husband knows how when I want to when we want to travel to ask me to pack just one little bag of art supplies. I mean, I can't even leave the house with a normal size purse. <laughs> my purse is basically a uh, carry on for an airplane because I have so much art supplies in my purse. <laughs> if my husband gets a bad back, it'll be because he's been hauling my art supplies for the last 10 years. <laughs> Yeah, Bright Sparkle says we are all magpies at heart. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's only a few people I know that don't like sparkles. And it's because they don't like when the sparkles get free. Like get on them yeah. or get on things that the sparkles don't belong on. But I don't know any colorists that don't like sparkles. Is anybody here watching tonight that don't like sparkles? I, I doubt they would be watching right now if they didn't like sparkles, <laughs> <laughs> knowing the name of this video. Okay, I'm gonna hit this with uh, some heat. Oh, I must not be plugged in. Um, would you mind, Steve, would you please plug it in for me? I don't wanna bend over. I kinda tweaked my back on Sunday 
Would you mind? Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. All right. This is that heat tool by Ranger. It's called Heat It. I'll show you. Why did you blow that at my? I'm I'm not needing any heat. Roberta says I can't stand glitter. Yeah, like loose glitter. A lot of people can't stand glitter. It seems to be a thing lately. Loose glitter. Yeah. Well, there's like an anti-glitter movement right now in like the um, world of like people who don't like plastics and like uh -huh. because glitter is like poisoning our oceans. Oh, so it's kind of a huh. That's interesting. So it's kind of a yeah. What's that called? <laughs> I, I can't think of the word right now either. Environmental. Yeah, environmental issue. Environmental issue. Because they're putting glitter in like everything, makeup, um, everything has glitter and it's supposedly poisoning our oceans or something, which well, could be true. All right, second layer. That dried really fast. Thank you, Polly. She just donated and says, you both always brighten up my day so lonely on this park. Oh, thank you so much, Polly. I'll send the sparkly hugs your way. <laughs> Okay, second coat is definitely, you can see a difference. Can they see the difference? I can see the difference. Hopefully it'll catch the light really well now. And you can see the color shift. Well, that was a lot of paint, Jennifer. Hold back those glittery, sparkly horses. Did you guys hear the geese? I wonder if they're um, flying south for the winter. <laughs> Bonnie says, love these colors that you're using tonight, Jen. Thank you. I was a little worried about this color clashing, but it's looking pretty. Be a Bright Sparkle says, there's bio glitter now and sugar glitter. Ooh. Oh, this is definitely looking better. If I can avoid putting my hand in the wet paint, we will be winning. Coloring Down Under says, not a fan of sparkles or gel pens, but I did kind of fall in love with gel pens after Jen taught us how to paint with gel pens. Yeah. That was a life-changing thing in my color world. Thanks, oh, Jen. awesome. I'm glad I could help so much. That's how I did that mandala I showed at the beginning there from yes from last week um I had so much fun painting all those gel pens to get the two-tone effect and I'm excited for the to play some more with those Pentel um, crazy pops that we're giving away and I know that they'll last a long time because we can use the glycerin with them Now every time I see a Smith store, I'm going to be like, that's where the crazy pops live. <laughs> Donna asked, is that a mica paint you're currently using? This is, um, it's by, color, uh, by Folk Art. It's called Color Shift. Oh, sorry, it wasn't in frame. Folk Art Color Shift. So it's a two-tone. Maybe Steve doesn't say anything on it, on the, other than just Color Shift. You okay, baby? What was that funny noise you made? She's going to get a bath. Either tomorrow mm -mm. or Friday. Just as acrylic paint. When metallic you, gloss finish. When you read about it on Amazon, it tells you more about how it has a two-tone effect. It says water-based, non-toxic. So I can lick it. All right, four little dots. 
and then I'll hit it with the heat gun to set it while Steve, if you wouldn't mind washing this one out too, since this is also an acrylic. I wonder if she inhaled some of her hair. Sometimes she inhales her hair and kind of gags on it. That was a beautiful thing to share with everybody. Okay. Did you need to do the other side too? Or did you get that one? I got it too? already. Okay. okay. So same deal as with the ink. It's acrylic based, so you need to use not your watercolor brushes and you need to wash anything that touched the acrylic ink right away. The acrylic paint. Do you mind, Steve? Nope. <laughs> Thank you. Here's a paper towel for you. Okay, so I'll move it in the light, and hopefully, now that we've got the second layer, oh, see how the blue undertones now shine. So you get that red violet look when you look at it straight down, and then when the light hits it, you get that blue, the blue violet look comes out. Hopefully you can see that. Let's go this direction and see if I hold it up this way. Well, that blue vial really shows up that direction. Pretty. So that's that color shift paint. Are you okay, baby? Do you need to go get a drink of water? Do you need a drink of water? You're gagging back here. Are you okay? All right, so that's the color shift paint. Oh, it's really doing pretty things now. So pretty. I think it'll get even better as it's drying and doing its thing. We still have this one we can try too if we want to, but I'm uh, we'll wait on that one. Let's do something different. Let's do a different product. We've got stickles we can do, which I think we'll save till the end um, because they need to dry as well. You kind of put them on. Okay, so we want to do pan pastels, right? And anything else have they shouted out? What else? Thank you so much for washing that. Okay. Did you see Steve with the blue violet undertones? Oh, wow. Isn't that neat? That's really neat. Matches the purple. The yeah. Violet there. Very cool. Okay. All right. Here's so a request for mermaid markers. Okay, we could do let's do some mermaid markers. And then we could add some stickles and then some pan pastels. Oh no, probably stickles at the very, very end. So that would be a good we only have a few more minutes. Oh, we gotta get going. Okay, so I think if we follow the same we've got this color here, which is sort of a bluey color. That'll kind of fit what we're doing, I think. And you can see the problem with the mermaid markers is I get ink up in the caps. See the ink? So when I open it, we are going to have a spill. Melinda just donated. She says, thank you for showing us so many things and methods. Oh, thank you so, so many much. New things uh, a sparkly hug to you too, Melinda. Thank you so much for donating. Okay. So you have to shake these up because see how the glitter um, settles at the bottom. So... But when you shake them, at least mine, the ink moves up into the cap. So you still have to shake it to get that glitter going. Mm -hmm. But the cap... Donna asked, how does the color shift paint look on paper compared to mica watercolor paints? Um, okay, so this is Paul Rubens right here, this blue. And then this is the color shift paint. So the color shift paint is acrylic and it's going to go down more thick like acrylic paint. So it'll dry thicker um, where a watercolor paint, you know, will dry flat. So it's, it's very different. It's two different creatures. Um, I prefer working with watercolor paints. They're more forgiving. You can reactivate them. If you activate a whole bunch of it, you don't have to wash it out and lose any that you didn't use. So I prefer the watercolor ones. But these two-tone type effects are really fun to play with and that's why I bought them. And I don't buy a lot of acrylic paint because I, I don't like the fact that they're not as forgiving, so. 
Okay, so I'm going to take the cap off of this. This color is Milky Way, and it's going to spill, and we're going to let it spill into this bowl, and we can use whatever is spilled out as the color we're going to use on our mandala. Beth asks, why is it important to wash anything that the acrylic paint has touched? Because it turns almost to plastic, and it will ruin any brushes, and almost like it's like a plastic film that's going to stay on your bowls or whatever it is that you put that paint on. So you want to wash everything. And that's why I don't use um, my good watercolor brushes. Because watercolor brushes tend to be more expensive than like an acrylic brush. At least the kinds I buy. So that's why I use um, separate brushes for my watercolor products. And then um, if I forget to wash my brush or yeah you get the idea Polly asked are the pH Martin acrylic or ink uh different pH Martin makes all of the above they make acrylics watercolors Indian inks they do all of it so you have to be kind of aware of what you buy when you go into the pH Martin world they have everything okay so that's some of that ink from the cap and wow a lot came out so we have a lot to work with and I'm going to use um, I'll show you what color it is I'm going to use my mimic watercolor brush for it um, this is the color it's going to be oh it didn't get on the screen there now you can see how pretty that color is, wow, that is a pretty color. it's a really pretty color and hopefully some of the sparkles are there I just wanted you to at least see what color what's going to happen here. Okay, so let's put it, oh, we could do the center, we could do, let's do these spots here. And I'm gonna go just right over the circle and we're going to cover the circle with some of the stickles. And hopefully some of the sparkles made it into the cap. So that's the problem with the mermaid markers for me, is the shaking. That is some seriously dark color. Yeah. It's going to give us some really pretty um, contrast. contrast. Thank you. Why is that word so hard for my brain to hold? I have that word written on a card where I can look up and read it when I need to because I cannot hold that word in my head. That is some dark blue. So pretty. We can water it down too if we want. I'm really liking the full color though, the full, what's the word, saturation. I found that word in my head. Yeah, intensity. Yeah, ooh, it's pretty. <laughs> Are you stealing the show again? What you doing? I love it when her head and she snaps her head up and her Russell. hair's off. <laughs> <laughs> Do oh. you need a bath? Do you need your hair combed and cut and a ponytail put in your hair? She says no. It's perfect the way it is. She's going to do it again. Watch. Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> She's such a character. I'm being really sloppy here because I'm trying to hurry. That's okay. We'll add a whole bunch of sparkly speckles at the end. And it will hide all my little mistakes. You watch. <laughs> She 
She is stealing the show. <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> Maybe next week she'll be all groomed and beautiful. Well, she's beautiful now, just more wild. Yes. She's a wild beauty. Oops. Wrong way. Huh, are you a wild beauty? Um, I can't wait to make it all the way around and you can see how this is drying down because it's looking so almost black when it's wet. Looking back at the very first one I painted, it's blue. And Anna said, like me in the morning, Rose's hair. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, what, who, what's that actress from, is it Phyllis Diller? Is that her name from Thoroughly Modern Millie? I don't remember. Um, I, don't <laughs> I bet someone here knows. And she had that amazing curly mop of hair. Um, I think her name was Phyllis Diller. You guys tell me if I'm remembering the right actress from, it was, it was Thoroughly Modern Millie, and then she was also, she was on a ton of movies. She was on Love Boat, and anyway, ever so often Rose's hair reminds me of that actress. Is it Phyllis Diller? Oh, I don't know if it was or not. Some Someone will remember. It's from Thoroughly Modern Millie, and she stands up at the end and does that crazy dance where she wishes her hair around. And when Rose does that, it reminds me of that actress because her hair was like white in that movie. And anyway, I was. Diana asked Carol Canning. Maybe. Now I'm going to have to look it up later and see if... And I'm going to have to watch that movie again. It's been so long since I've watched that movie. Soy sauce. You covered my Paris gown with soy sauce. <laughs> Has anybody seen that movie? Thoroughly Modern Millie. With Julie Andrews, right? Yep. It says Julie Andrews. Oh, you're looking it up for me? <laughs> yep. Thank you. <laughs> oh, there she is. Carol Channing. Hello. That's her, yep. Carol Channing. Well, who's Phyllis Diller then? <laughs> Polly says Phyllis Diller always looks like she stuck her finger in a socket. I'll have to look up her picture later. But it's Carol Channing that I'm thinking of from um, Early Modern Millie. That one song she sings and she whips her hair around. What a funny topic. Looks like somebody calmed down. All right, we're almost all the way around and you'll be able to see how different this ink, this mermaid marker blue color changes as it dries. And hopefully that first one is dry enough that we can see if we've got some sparkle in it. Better, because it's sparkle September. Donna says she was a comedian. Her voice is the queen in A Bug's Life. Who? Phyllis Diller. Phyllis Diller. Ah. And she had a show called The Phyllis Diller Show. Ah. That's funny. It's very quiet in here now. 
now that Rose has calmed down. <laughs> Okay, so we were going to do this stuff, and then we were going to do the pan pastels, right? Right. And then the stickles. Okay. Polly says, you said the B word, bath, so that calmed her down. Uh -huh. She's <laughs> like, I don't need a bath. See, I'm perfect. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see sparkles in the dried ones. Okay, now you'll be able to see side by side. This is one that's been drying longer. Interesting how the how now it's translucent. Yeah, yeah, you can see the circle that we're going to fill with um, the stickles. Look how yeah, pretty. They're quite messy and seem to be a pain but boy those colors are the mermaid really neat. marker colors are really vibrant i'm thinking we need to take that same color up here oh this is a bad brush for it it's got too much flex i'm going to grab that teeny tiny liner brush we were using before by arteza and use that brush because it's got smaller bristles so it has less flex and the bristles are uh, more rigid because they aren't watercolor bristles they're acrylic bristles so I have a little more control okay and then this will be a good contrast having that dark pull the eye out my hand is shaking okay Aspie Wisdom says I'm amazed at how much use you got just from the ink and the cap. I know, we didn't even... And look how much is still there. Like, there's tons there. And because it's water-based, I can reactivate it and use it. Where that acrylic paint and the acrylic De La Rani ink was a loss. Again, that's why I really like water-based products. I could just save this little bowl if I wanted to and come back to it tomorrow. Do start another art piece with it. I could probably even figure out a way to get it back into the mermaid marker with a pipette. Okay, swing it around. Good. Oh, that was messy. Shh, don't tell. Polly asked what you plan to do with the center. I don't know. I'm kind of hoping when we move to the Pan pastels, I'll get inspired. <laughs> I have no plan here. We're we're winging it. You guys are the ones telling me what to do here. Michelle asked, I smeared one of my pictures. How do I fix it? What did you smear it with? <laughs> That's the question, if it's fixable or not. Um, you can see I've got lots of mistakes here. This is a lot of sloppy coloring here most of my coloring projects are sloppy like this and I tend to fix the sloppiness with my background. Backgrounds hide a million problems. Um, I like a nice sloppy background because it hides my mistakes. Um, so we'll end up adding a lot of 
fun, free details. Lots of speckles, lots of sparkle and dots, and it will hide from the eye a lot of these mistakes that I've made along the way. It kind of just draws your eye away. Yeah. So I don't like being fussy. Um, it's really annoying. <laughs> So I, I try not to be too messy, but it kind of takes the fun out of it for me. You also try not to be a perfectionist. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I don't like that. Being a perfectionist takes the fun out of it. Um, so I try to be as neat as possible without annoying myself. Because I know that in the end, we're going to add a lot of fun, free movement type background stuff so be a bright sparkle says i was just thinking about i was just thinking how precise you were <laughs> oh really all i'm seeing are all these mistakes all these little wobbles and white spots i missed and that's all i'm seeing but that goes to show you that um we can hide a lot of that that you're not seeing that because i we're using the color theory correctly it's pulling the eye out and away from the mistakes and so yeah it's working if you're not seeing as all the mistakes <laughs> i'm seeing then it's working <laughs> So, okay, let's hit it with the heat gun to help speed up the drying time, and then I'll move it in the light so you can see the sparkle we got. Michelle says they smeared it with glitter gel pens. Um, I would rather that you can't really erase gel pen. Gel pen is there once it's there. So I would go to a covering, um, add more glitter. <laughs> If I ever smeared gel pen, I usually go, oh, well, I guess that's the new direction I'm headed is more gel pen. <laughs> so I usually add more or I'll add a different color and draw the eye away from that area. That's usually what I end up doing is just add more or um, like what we're going to do here for the background, which will be spritzing some fun colors on to just misdirect the eye so they don't. The eye doesn't go straight to all of the little mistakes. Trick of the eye. Okay. Yeah, you're getting hair in your mouth. That's the problem. You need a haircut, little lady. She's like, no, I don't. I don't need a haircut. All right, this is drying up really nice. All oh, the shine. Hello, Sparkle September. Okay, we're already over time, so we got to get these Pam Pastels up here. So as I was saying, I was gifted some new Pam Pastels. Let me show them to you. I think I put all the sparkly pastels in one spot. So see, we still have a ton of this color that I can play with. And because it's water-based, I can reactivate this anytime I want. So we're not going to wash this out. I'll save this and maybe use it as a background. I can throw some water in it. See the color that it changes to? That bright, pretty blue when you add water to it. So this won't be washed out. I'm going to just set this aside and use this another time. Basically so. just let it dry. Just let it dry and then I can hit it with water and it will reactivate and away it goes. But the brushes tend to hold whatever's in this, the brushes like to hold it. So these will need to be washed really well. So, but we'll do that later. Okay, so I'm gonna set this in my cupboard somewhere where it can sit and dry and not bother anyone. And I'm gonna reach for my Pam Pastels. And I think I put all of the ones that have some shine in it together. So, are you the shine? You're the shine. Okay. This is the collection of shiny pastel Pam Pastels that I have been gifted. Um, from various people. I think I have three different people now gifting me <laughs> Pam mm, Pastels. So, nice. so grateful because they're very expensive. So we have um, light gold. I have some purple now, pearlescent violet, which I think that might look really good. 
I'm going to put that down as a possibility. We've got this really pretty pearlescent yellow. I have a pearlescent red. And then I recently was gifted these two as well. And they come in fine and coarse. Haven't even had time to try this yet. Um, this is black fine which I don't know if that has pearlescent in it or not. Pearl, yep. And then we have coarse, black coarse pearl. Ooh, I bet that's pretty. Yes, look at the sparkle in that. So I think I wanna take a peek at that. And then this is the colorless blender that I was gifted. So that's what I've got that we can play with, with Pam Pastels. I'm feeling the purple because I think it will really um, bring out that purple band that we added. So I like that one there for sure. But we have other options. Kind of want to see what that does. I don't know how it will play in with what I've got here though. So that's what I've got. Uh, I don't quite know where to put this. <laughs> You got art supplies going everywhere now. <laughs> so speaking of those, the mermaid marker ink. Yes. Polly asked if you were to cover the dish with cling wrap, would it stay liquid? It might. I, I don't know. It's a good question. Okay, then I have a stash of the tools that Pam Pastel um, makes to go with their supplies. So we'll try one of their tools. Um, let's crack into some fresh ones. They have a variety of tools, different softnesses. Some go on to different things like, like this is like a makeup applicator type. So we have options, PayPal options. And I think let's try these two tools. Teresa likes the black for backgrounds. So does Deanna. Okay. That's the idea here. I'm thinking let's do purple in the middle and then some of the black out to the side and then we can splatter. Maybe we'll bring up that same ink, this color for splatters and then we'll bring in the stipples and we'll call it good. Michelle says, thank you so much for helping me. You're such an inspiration to me. I'm still learning the techniques of blending. Well, I'm glad I could help. Blending is can be a challenge, but you can do it. Um, you can you can totally do it it's all about the right tool paired with the right paper and then just practicing getting some good practice in okay so let's crack into this beauty here and see what it does oh, so pretty look at that color so in case you want to know um i'll show you the back really quick so you can understand. Pam Pastel is the brand. This is a soft pastel, a soft chalk pastel. There's a difference between oil pastels, chalk pastels, and then in the chalk pastel world, there's hard chalk pastels and soft chalk pastels. This is a soft, ultra soft chalk pastel. And this color is 954.5 pearlescent violet. And this has mica in it. Mica coated with titanium duct dioxide and iron oxide to get the iridescence. That's what this one is. And we're going to use this and I'm hoping it will help us get right in where I want to be. So this is really soft pastel. And this is considered artist quality, like um, high-end artist quality. And that's why they're so expensive. High pigmentation, long um, What's it called? Lasts a long time in light, um, light fastness. So like high-end artists use Pam Pastels, pastel artists. So let's see just how pearlescent these are. Brenda is considering buying some Derwent metallic watercolor pencils. <clears throat> Have you used those? I have, and they're a little disappointing. Um, we could grab them. I think I have them somewhere handy, and I could show them to you. Look at that. That's kind of why she's asking, just because she wondered if it's worth investing in. I may have them right handy here. If I do, I'll show them to you real quick. Oh, that's pretty. 
Oh, sorry. I'm like all in it here. <laughs> Steve's wanting to show you the other angle and we got all kinds of things in the way. Let's move that there. Now we can all enjoy the beauty that is Pam Pastels. So why are Pam Pastels so great? Um, Pam Pastels are really high pigmented, so you don't need to use a lot and you get a lot of color for each little grain of pastel. It's just like color pencils. Um, you spend a little bit more money and it's a lot easier to use. You get a lot of color for every um, swipe of the pencil. Same with pan pastels. Again, also the other difference is they have a higher light fast rating. So if you were a professional artist doing portraitures, you could charge more because you would tell the person you're making the portrait for that you used Pam Pastels um, so their portrait's going to last longer and therefore um, I can charge you more. So that's why people, a professional artists, invest in this kind of product. They blend like a dream. They do amazing things. Do you as a colorist need Pam Pastels? Of course not. I've got a set of really cheap pastels, chalk pastels that I bought like at Hobby Lobby that I can get beautiful backgrounds out of and do beautiful things with them. Um, so they work great for that purpose. Um, would they do a beautiful portrait like the professionals do? Of course they wouldn't. Those cheap um, pastels would not do what the professionals do with them. It would be like trying to ask a crazy art pencil to do what a Karen Dash pencil does. It just can't do it. So it's up to you what you want to do. Um, but these little lovelies, these little pans of color are very expensive. But I kind of think they're worth every penny. <laughs> they are a really special little product. And if you ever want to splurge and invest in something that's really neat, I think it's really worth it. Now, I want to see how we've done. So I'm going to use the dry end that has no product on it. And we're going to kind of buff out and try to get a nice gradient here. There's that colorless blender you can use for this part too. There's lots of videos online of how to use um, <laughs> Pam Pastels. I am not a professional at them. I just know enough to play with them and have fun with them. And I wanna practice more and get better at them. But, but I think that turned out really pretty. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, let's see if we got a shine. Let's see the sparkle with the pearlescence. It's subtle, but it's there. Can you see the shine? Kind of slow. It's definitely shining, but yeah. not as shiny as the paints. But there is a shine to it. person for sure. Yeah. Oh, it's really a pretty color. I love that color. And it's setting off that purple ring we did out there. Now I'm really excited to see what this thing does here. Okay. So this is a coarse, so it's going to be a different kind of um, pastel feeling. I'm excited. So if you wanted a watercolor alternative to those Derwent uh, metallics, what would you choose? Do you know? Can you think of anything? A watercolor metallic pencil. Is that what she's after? Yeah, watercolor. Yeah. Metallic watercolor pencil. No, I can't think of one. The graphitant pencils are really neat, um, but they, as soon as you hit them with water, they lose all their metallicness because it's graphite. So they get their shine from graphite. And when you hit it with water, that graphite sort of washes away and you're left with just the pigment. Um, so I don't know. Anybody have a recommendation? I haven't come across a really good water activated metallic pencil yet. Come on, baby. Except for graphitants, huh? That's what I just oh, said. Oh, sorry. I was typing. Yeah. But then, and that's what you said is they lose their 
They lose yeah. their shine as soon as you hit them with water because of the graphite. Um, I can't open that. See the little did did did. Oh, he got it first try. I didn't do it from the bottom. Okay, so let's see what this coarse one looks like. It's already more sparkly. Oh, let's read the back. Black coarse 014 pearl medium. Um, mica coated with T102 and blah, blah, blah. Medium um, nacre noir, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Via Bright Sparkle says Spectrum Noir and Faber Castell have watercolor metallic pencils. And I think I have some of all of those. We'll, we'll, we'll play with them here in a minute. Okay, there it is on the sponge. Whisper. Okay, here we go. Wow, look at that pigment. I mean, I barely touched that yeah. pan. Wow. That's the difference. If I was using my cheap ones, you have to like rub and rub and rub and then you get some stuff to do stuff with. <laughs> that was a really intelligent. I think well, what's I'm... cool to me about that is it's like it'll create a vignette. Yeah. So explain to them what vignette is. That word. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's more of a photography term now, though. Um, a lot of I think it probably came from the art world, like a lot of painters and stuff you know where you darken the edges and feather it in yeah so it's darker on the edges and kind of like you're doing now that's a vignette okay so we're vignetting it up mm -hmm. okay and because i've got the tape on the edges well, we should get a nice crisp border Oh, my tape is trying to come up right there. Don't you do it. Not for a few more seconds, at least. Okay. Trying to feather What's it nice up. about a vignette is it um, really draws your eye to the center because the edges are dark. Your eye can't help but now go to the brightest part of the page, which is now the center. Or at least the, the image that you've colored here. I can't get over how far that color is going. I'm trying to stay away from my wet paint here. We're going to blend that out better here in a second. I'm just going to get my finger in there. If you don't like getting messy, don't play with chalk pastels. They are a messy creature. Certain art supplies are just messy. Carolyn says, what I love about pan pastels is how easy they are to erase. So great about pastels in general they are erasable so if you make a mistake you can get in there and lift it or if you want to add a highlight you can get in there and create it okay making our way around okay I wonder what the difference is between the fine and the coarse do you want to open up the fine for us the black fine yeah, where's it at right behind me on that tray. I mean, obviously it's one is fine, one is coarse, but I'm wondering how they... How they feel? Yeah, and color. Like the... the look. Yeah. Everything's in my way now.
Ooh, that was a cool sound. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now that we got the general lay of the land, we can go back in and refine this. Now you can see again how the power of a background, everybody, um, draws your eye again away from mistakes. All those little mistakes I made, your eye doesn't linger anymore. Is it sparkly? I'm seeing sparkles. Not as many as in the pan itself. I'll move it in the light here in just a second. What I'm thinking is we'll get the general vignette. Is that what you called it? Yeah. We'll get the general vignette laid down. And then I'm going to come in and add more intensity with the in the corners. And this will need to be set. So we'll use some setting spray to make sure it doesn't rub off. Steve's trying to keep up with me as I'm spinning around here. Okay. I'm trying to keep it white and bright close to the mandala. But I'm also trying to deepen up right along the border. So when we pull that tape, we have that crisp line. Okay. Deanna says, I've learned so much tonight. Oh, I'm glad. This has been fun. And we've actually finished a whole mandala. We have to still do those dots there. I think I'm going to leave those loops open. I'm liking that look. Although having a little purple in those, I don't know now. Sure. That would be pretty. Okay. So let's now that we've got the vignette built, let's come in with more of this and really build that dark. You can layer it up. Now, when you're using any kind of dry product, whether it's pastels or color pencils, you want to make sure you're working on a textured or toothy paper so that the paper will grip and hold on to your product. Smooth paper, you're only going to get like one layer, one chance. So uh, the more texture, they make special paper for pastels. So when you go to your art store, go feel the pastel papers. They have some pastel papers are as coarse as sandpaper. Sparkle asked when you set it, will it affect the other areas? It might. Um, and when you set, some pastel artists never set their pastel art because setting it will actually change the color. Um, think of um, anything dry, think of flour. When you spray flour with water, it changes it, right? Same with pastels. When you spray it with a fixative, it will change that, that color. So some artists won't ever spray it. They put it behind glass and that's how they protect it. Again, that's why they like having high quality pastel. Okay, I'm liking that. Okay. Oh, that's neat. I can't wait yeah, to see Yeah, Carolyn it. said the same thing, that it should recommend masking the painted areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what the difference is between the fine and the coarse. Can you see the sparkle difference? So if I touch it here, those two fingers, well, maybe go on the other camera angle. I'm not going to touch the thing. I'll just get it covered in. So the this finger is the fine. This finger is the coarse. Oh, so, wow. You can really see the difference. Yeah. And then this finger is just from blending. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's the difference between the two. Martha said, how about a Winsor & Newton iridescent medium, which you could add to watercolors or use watercolor pencils and put on a palette and then yeah. add the medium? Yeah, I've got some of that. That would be really fun. That would be an all-purpose desert island item that you could just add to everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, we are just getting good and messy, man. Okay. And I think I do need to add just a little bit of the purple into those. We'll use this little applicator. You can get... Um, I went to Dollar Tree and you can buy a all-purpose cheap throwaway makeup applicators like this that I use with my cheap pastels. Ooh, pretty. Yes, I needed that. Oh, sorry. Not supposed to blow pastels. And I just blew them. Bad. Bad, Jennifer. <laughs> Bad. Denny loves what you did with the center. Simple but effective. Yeah. Okay, so one more thing we're going to add, and that's the stickles. And then we'll pull the tape and color good. And the stickles I always do last because you have to let it dry for like 12 to 24 hours. I've tried speeding up the drying process with the stickles and they kind of deflate. But if you let them sit and dry, you'll get like a little, almost like a pearl or a sequin type effect with your stickle. But speeding up the drying effect makes the little pearl deflate. <laughs> So I learned that the hard way. Okay, so I need your help choosing which color of stickle to do. I'm going to just wipe the extra off of that tool. Same here. Okay. Wow, we have some serious cleaning up to do when we're done here, like usual. <laughs> okay, so um, we could do silver, I think might be appropriate. We have this pinky color, which kind of matches the purple we got going on. And then we have a pearlescent we could do. I like that. I think those are the three I'm going to give you. Oh wait, no, let's look at blue too, since we have blues. Ooh. Okay, those are the three colors. Um, I want you to vote. Pearl, pink, blue, or silver. Okay, Steve, let them vote. Pearl pink, blue, or silver. And they're going to go right here on these dark blue circles. Brenda says, if I was using that eyeshadow applicator, I'd be so tempted to put that lovely shade on my eyes. LOL. Yeah, <laughs> that would be pretty. Although it's probably not the most healthy. Iron oxide and all kinds of stuff that's probably not mm -hmm. meant for our skin. <laughs> California cancer warnings on them. It does. It did on the... That's why we don't blow it. Mm -mm. You shouldn't blow it because um, uh, it's not good for us to breathe it in. Um, and it says right on there, not for cosmetic use. <laughs> yeah, because it looks like a nice little makeup dish of makeup, doesn't it? Yeah. But no, it's not for cosmetics. Okay, so do we want silver pearls, pink, I mean, pearls, silver, ugh, pearls, pink, blue, or silver? <laughs> Steve's counting up the votes. Okay. Well, pink and blue, um, it's between pink and blue, and they're tied. Okay, I'll take these two off then, so they're not even an option. And Steve, you get to choose. Because I can't decide. I would do the pink. Okay. It's kind of a pinky purple, so it'll tie back into this pink circle and the purpley colors. Yeah. So I think 
think it's a good choice. I'm going to wipe off what I have on me from the pastels so we don't get it mixed in with what I'm about to do. Wow, I'm messy. <laughs> and that Jane Davenport paint really is staining. really staining. This is a messy project. I love a good mess. Okay, here we go. Last step, and then we pull the paint. No, the tape. Put the blue away. Okay, so this is Stickles by Ranger. It's a glitter glue. You store it tip down. That's how I've been storing it, so it should work well. And like I said, don't speed up the drying process. You want it to just dry slowly so that... Oh, listen to that nice squeak. You want it to dry nice and slow so it stays nice and poofy. So you get like a sequin type, um, like it's been glued on is what we're going for. And it always takes me a minute to kind of warm up to this process. So the first one's going to be a little ugly, but that's all right. Okay, one down. Who knows how many to go. Okay, trying to keep it round so it looks like I glued something on. Pile it up all cute. I'd like to buy more of this stickle stuff eventually. But my biggest problem with these little glues is storing them has been a pain. <laughs> I don't like storing them. Now they may, they sell special things to store them. So if you do invest in them, you can buy special things to store them. Wow, my hand's going to be tired. I might have to trade off and let Steve do some gluing. Oh, you can do it, Jennifer. You're amazing. Am I getting better or worse? <laughs> I can't tell. <laughs> camera has a hard time picking up the color of those. It looks really dark. We'll move it in the light as soon as I get them on here. Yeah, you can see it a little better on that angle. Oh my word! Deanna says Joanne's has the tray, clearance 396. <gasps> what? <laughs> I haven't been to Joanne's been so long. I keep telling Steve I need to go and then I don't go because I'm afraid I'll spend too much money. <laughs> but it sounds like I need to go. Need. Oh my goodness, my thumb. Do they have a tool to squeeze these for you? That's what I need. A stickle tube squeezer. <laughs> <laughs> Be a bright sparkle says you're doing amazing. Thank you. I had no idea that I was going to be... I don't think I've ever done this many stickles in a row. I think I've only ever done like two or three in a row, you know? <sighs> you can do it. Almost there. This is harder than burnishing with color pencil. I know what's wrong is I have burnishing muscles, but not stickle muscles. <laughs> You're gonna say this is harder than birthing. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was gonna say, no. I doubt that. Birthing was a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me laugh, I'll make a mistake. 
harder than birthing. (laughs) 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 No, I can definitely say birthing was harder. (laughs) Oh, that's funny. Almost there. (sighs) One more. Brenda's asking if stickles can go on fabric. Oh, I don't know. Acid-free, adult use only, made in USA, contains, conforms, uh, doesn't say. That would be a good thing to go research on their website. Somehow I doubt it. Okay. Whoo! Success! All right, let's pull this tape and I'll move it in the light and we'll see how sparkly. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'll move it in the light right now so you can see it. Can you can we, see it? Oh no, go a little slower. Okay. And try another, try the other angle. Tilt it the other way. This way? See if that'll pick it up. Oh, come on. If I go extreme angle. Yeah, you kind of start to see them there a little bit. They definitely look oh, better there. in person, though. There you can see them. Yeah. That's better. Extreme angle. Okay, <laughs> let's take off the tape now, though, because that's like... Which one comes off first? I think it's this top one. One of my favorite parts of doing an art piece is pulling the tape at the end. So the trick with pulling tape is to pull it back on itself, not straight up. And usually that will help protect the paper underneath. Oh, but see, it's tearing the paper a little bit. It's okay. We're all right. A little tearing never hurt anyone. Don't say that to a woman after she's (laughs) given birth. (laughs) Had to say it. Had to say it. I can say that. Steve's looking at me like that was inappropriate, Jennifer. (laughs) Okay. Sorry if I offended anyone by that comment. (laughs) All right. Okay. I think this is the next one down here. (laughs) Oh, dear. Okay. Come on. Why are you misbehaving? Let's try this See, up here next. Angle is still giving you trouble, huh? We'll go this way. Well, remember how usually I tap the tape on yeah, my oh, pants? Right, yeah. And I didn't do that. And I said, as I was doing it, I said, oh, I forgot to do that. I hope that wasn't a big mistake. Yeah, so that's right. we're finding out now if that was a big mistake. <laughs> Lots of LOLs. <laughs> I kind of thought people would think that was funny. (laughs) But I shouldn't have said it. That was inappropriate. That was really inappropriate. Ban. Ban me. Demonetized. Demonetized. A little bit of tearing there, but not bad. I'm actually quite impressed. There we go. Oh, look at that crisp border. So pretty. This is turning out so pretty. Okay. There we go. There we go. Wow, that's really neat. Okay, take away the old plastic and let's hold it up and do some movement. Now there's definitely sparkle in the background. Oh, yeah. From the Pam Pastel. Camera can pick it up. Okay, let's try this angle here. If I hold it this way, can the camera catch it? No. Closer to the camera, maybe? Oh, wow, that blows it out. Okay, let's try this way then. Okay. Can you see? If I bring it up here and you look at just the corner, there, now you can see the sparkle of the Pam Pastel. It's very subtle. Um, and hopefully, if I move it like this, can you see the 
um, our stickles. Wow, those are really neat looking. The like stickles. you said, it's like they start to look like a... Like oh. you put on a sequin yeah. or a button or something onto your art. And the cool wow, thing about the stickles really is you can make them any shape. So instead of buying like a bunch of stickers that you don't know if they will fit the size of whatever you're doing, the stickle can be made to fit the exact size. There it is. Let's try this one. Oh yeah, right there you can start to see the stickles a little better. Yep. Move it in the light. Shine and sparkle for Sparkle September. Well, we went 45 minutes over, <laughs> <laughs> but we finished an entire coloring page with lots of fun new products. The only thing I didn't get to do at the end, I wanted to do some spritzing on it, but that's okay. I feel good about how it turned out just the way it is. I think it's beautiful. I love the color shifting. I love all the different products we tried. It would be fun to count up how many different products we tried. I'll have to do that later. But look at that. Oh, and pretty cool that we didn't even plan like a color palette and we got some good colors and wow. Yvonne asked, will you set the pastels before or after the stickles dry? After the stickles have dried. So I'm just going to set it here. I'll clean up what I have to, but I'll probably leave the majority of the mess till tomorrow. And then um, tomorrow I'll come here and the first thing I'll do is set it with my setting spray. I'll take it outside and set it with the good Krylon setting spray that I have. It's a UV finish setting spray that works really good and then um, I won't have to worry about anything budging and hopefully tomorrow the stickles will still be standing up all cute and shiny. I'll take a picture of it tomorrow and I'll post it on Instagram and Facebook. Make sure you're following me on both places. Let's see. That's my Instagram right there. So make sure you're following me over there and I'll post it. I'll do the same thing I did as I did last week where I do like sort of a moving picture so you can see all of the shine and the sparkle and um, you'll see the finished result after it's been sh um, sprayed and everything. And you'll see how we did together with our fun piece of art. We did such a good collaboration together. You guys helped so much pick colors, pick products, and look at what we ended up with. We do good work, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. I hope you're doing something sparkly for Sparkle September. Um, I've been asked already if I plan on doing Inktober, and the answer is yes. This will be my third row, uh, third year in a row doing Inktober. We also have a like an advent calendar for October that we do. Um, so I'll be doing that as well for October. So you can look forward to that coming up in October. But we still have two more weeks in Sparkle September to celebrate some more sparkles. And we have a surprise project coming up that we will be releasing very soon. And don't forget, I'm giving away a set of these crazy pop um, gel pens by Pentel. So follow the link in the description of this video. Go check it out. Get your entry in at, for your chance to win these crazy pop pens. And I'll throw in a few fun um, coloring pages printed on my favorite paper for gel pens. So you can look forward to that if you win this prize. So good luck everyone on winning these crazy pop pens. If you're watching this video later and you missed out on this giveaway, don't worry, we're going to have additional giveaways. I have some planned right away actually. So make sure you have subscribed, hit that thumbs up and that little bell so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Thank you everyone that contributed to our video, our channel. We so appreciate all of the support, even when you hit that like button, those little things that you do to support us really do help. So thank you so much for all your support. Thanks for joining us. Hi Rose, say thank you. <laughs> She's like, whatever, mom. <laughs> Thanks so much. I hope you all have a sparkly, wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye everyone.